and welcome to this channel, Stone the Crane. I'm Kelly Ann Chaos. Today I wanted to talk about um, a case, uh, something that happened here um, where I live in Queensland. It happened two years ago. He was involved, this um, young fella, he was 21. His name was Wilson Gavin, which I actually kind of find a little odd because I think it feels the other way around to me. Gavin Wilson sort of sounds a little bit more normal to me than Wilson Gavin, but Wilson Gavin was his name. So he was going to the University of Queensland here and he was a member of the Liberal National Club, which is like a um, political sort of, sort of club. Now he, there's not a lot of information about this uh, that I could find, just the, the little bare sort of minimums, but um, there was an interview that I seen with him and he was talking about um, being gay and that uh, how he didn't have as much of a problem as being a gay young man, as what he did as being right, on the right side of the political spectrum, that he was given more sort of grief, bullying from that, which you know, I'm 46, like I said before, I'm not, I'm not a young lady um, by any means. So for me, it's a little hard for me to get my head around because being a 90s um, teenager, young person, we weren't really politically minded like they are now. You know, I've got a younger son, early 20s, and he's a lot more politically minded and left-right paradigm of the, the, the spectrum than, than what, I, what I was at the same age. This young fella, Wilson Gavard, and, and this group of liberal national um, youngsters, I suppose, you know, in their early 20s, they went off to protest at the Drag Queen story time here in Queensland, and this is in the capital Brisbane. It was literally in this time, so this is 2020, it was like a world phenomena sort of thing. It was, I actually thought it was really quite bizarre why anyone would take their little kids to go see a drag queen, tell them stories and do arts and crafts. I don't get it. I wouldn't do it. Um, I actually agree with young Wilson and his group group. I, I really don't think drag queens are for children and, and that's what they were chanting. Drag queens aren't for kids. And I, te I absolutely tend to agree. Not for kids. Drag queens are 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 not for kids. What I don't agree with was probably really was the way that they went about it. It wasn't great. They really shouldn't have got in the drag queen's face. I, I thought that was probably pushing it a little bit too far. And I, I th also the, the Liberal National Party themselves thought that was going a little bit too far and they dissociated their name with this young college group. So, you know, there was that sort of, it, it went a little bit, I suppose, a little bit viral it went sort of mainstream and um, what had happened during this time like so this was on a Sunday night was this protest at the library in Brisbane with this drag queen with this drag queen story hour that the protest was on now what had happened is there's this like pop duet group here in Queensland and they're from Brisbane as well they're called the Veronicas I really don't know much about them I'm old so I don't I don't get it but one of these Veronicas is named Jess and they're, they're, they're twins they kind of look a little bit Anya Grande to me um, I haven't listened really to listen to any of their songs at all so I can't tell you what type of... I just know that they're pop, I know that they're from Queensland, and I know that they're twins. So one, this Jess, 
who used to date Ruby Rose. Now, Ruby Rose was very, very openly gender fluid, had been mentioned as gender fluid back in the day. Um, I can't remember what the article, but I do remember there was a specific article about Ruby Rose coming out saying that how she was gender fluid. So this Jess was dating her and had broken up with her and was dating this other person. Now, she had put up on her Twitter the video of the protest and sort of slagging it on Twitter. Now, I can't find the slag off. I can't find what this Jess actually said. I'm not really computer savvy. I'm an iPad person. Um, I don't know how to find deleted tweets. This Veronica, this is this Jess, and I can't say her last name. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Put up this, and they so she had 300 plus, 300,000 plus. So this Jess, this Veronica's, this, this one of these twins, this Jess, had 300 plus thousand followers on Twitter and put this rant up and within this 24 hours apparently a lot of this TRAs and trans community had, had literally messaged the hell out of this young Wilson Gavin like literally from what I understand bombarded him with messages yeah. Um, basically, you know, similar to the J.K. Rowling's thing that, um, you know, how wrong he was and, and that type of thing. And, you know, just the hatred coming off the left. And, and I understand that they're very upset. They feel like that this was hatred against them. But fighting hatred with hatred and cancelling this cancel culture really has a, um, can have a real negative fallout, you know, and this is what's happened here with this young fella. So on the Sunday night, this this happened, this protest at the Drag Queen Story Hour, Story Time. Story Time? Story Hour. Doesn't matter, does it? Um, anyway, by this Monday morning, young Wilson Gavin had killed himself, had actually, it had, is alleged, that he had committed suicide. So apparently after that, this twin from the Veronica's, this Jess, had deleted the, the footage of the protest and deleted what they had put on Twitter. But of course, you know, the damage was done. This young fella had apparently committed suicide and killed himself. The mainstream media stuff that I read or saw really indicated to this young man, this 21-year-old um, gay man, very con a conservative gay man, was unstable and every single one of these things mentioned Lifeline, Helpline, if you know anyone like this, get them some help. And I thought that was really gas gaslighty, like from the very little information I was be able to get from this particular occurrence that happened in, in my state. And with, with the drag queen story, it was really, um, everything was really delivered from, everything was really delivered from mainstream media on the side of the LGBT community. And even as going as far as I would say that there seemed to be very little actual um, um, giving a crap about the parents and this young man and his family and his friends. And there was sort of a real coldness and, um, you know, this is what mental illness will do to you. And, and again, I, I actually found the whole thing a little bit, how you going? Because um, isn't that their narrative? Isn't that the trans narrative themselves? Isn't their narrative, um, we're getting bullied, we're getting picked on. If you bully us and you pick on us, 
we're mentally unstable, we're going to kill ourselves. So I just found this particular case being in my home state um, and the very fact that it, it, it reeks of the um, flip over, like, like it, 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 it's completely us about face of what the narrative is that they, that the mainstream narrative is, you know. Um, and it, it was really care, care factor of zero. And I really felt for this young fella. Um, so then when I looked a little bit further into this Veronica, this Jess, and, and the being that she's dated this Ruby Rose, which to me was a little bit of a, um, hello, how you going? You know, as far as I'm concerned, really a pusher of the propaganda, of the LGBT propaganda. Her new boyfriend, this Jess's new boyfriend, and, and apparently had been dating this um, boy, this boyfriend for... Um, 12 months before this had happened with with Gavin here in in, in the Queensland in in Brisbane the, um, and that was that Jess had started dating this trans identified person so this is a a female to male trans identified person so that obviously triggered in my opinion this veronica's jess to post this and to have their rant and to have their say and it was just really really unfortunate that um the final outcome of this attack of this council culture was a young man's life and and he didn't die because of protecting himself against homophobic um, slurs or hom against anything homophobic at all. At the end of the day, um, it was his conservatism, and he was right, it was his conservatism that the problem lied with. As I said, I don't agree with the way they went about their protest. Um, they are young people after all. And, and look, humans make mistakes. We do. We totally do. Young people especially make huge amount of mistakes. And, and I think with this whole LGV thing as, as it goes along and, and time goes along, we're going to find a lot more um, of these people regretting what they've done. And, you know, a lot of healing is going to be needed. A lot of healing is going to have to be done. Again, these were young people. These were kids in their early 20s at, at, at uni. And, you know, the Veronica's, they're, they're in their 30s from what I understand. This Jess is, is um, look, don't quote me on this, but I think she's about 34, 36. You know, it's about 10 years younger than I am. She's dating this um, trans-identified person and they're in their early 20s apparently like you know a music uh, uh, they're, they're a mu musician and got some sort of song coming or out or something like that i personally don't agree with the drag queen story time like the whole thought of taking my kids to something like that, to doing arts and crafts and story with a drag queen. For starters, you know, I used to run for three years. I used to run a, a kids art class at my local little gallery here, like a little, and fuck me, hey, glitter is like fucking herpes, hey, it fucking gets everywhere, like seriously. That's the last thing you want your real kids really playing with is some drag queen's glitter because that shit just gets everywhere. Apart from the fact that I think it's in America more so than anywhere else, seems to be a lot of these drag queens are coming out with records of having, um, you know, previous problems with not being able to keep their hands off children. And that's the biggest issue I have with it is... 
drag his adults into tamer. These are clowns. These these are clowns that choose to use a woman's face in their their entertainment, their performances. And and for consenting adults, I don't have a problem with that, but children can't consent to this. And at the end of the day, I, I just think that we, we just came a little bit too far. Yeah, the kids are wrong. Yeah, they shouldn't have protested in the way that they did. But I don't think the context of their protest was to be dismissed. And, and I think if they maybe called out to a few other protesters, you know, like maybe if, if the young people had reached out to to maybe one of the local um, feminist groups and got a few older people on board and um, then they know their way around a bit of activism, maybe that might have helped. But it's really unfortunate story of a young man. He took it upon himself to get a group of young people together to try to put a stop to something that he thought was really, really important that ended at the end of the day, not just a cancelling, but he himself losing his life. Whether that, they say, whether it be mental illness, I, I don't know if I believe that, or whether it was literally through cancelling and bullying online. Either way, either way. Anyway, on that note, I'm going to love yous and leave yous. This one's for Wilson Gavin. Stay now.